Mama vana se ma Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV die o se dem yopo. Kwajo poku eye MPP ni e mapa. Me kan se wo ye a member of the Baumia campaign team. Na o sa ye energy aspect. Papa yi ene ewo TV3, the key point, juma di so, wako gune ni mwase poto. Na eye onabola, ye freno, e jod bawa, e chrene se, look, se no kre ewo honu mwa, uye den entro, di kontumpu intimin di hini. Wa expose unu ankasa, ewo energy sector yi mwen se ensa mwen. E fan dum so ni se nse mi ye pi a che se ye fan hon ye u ha u ra han ma na en pi pi fo o kan e se o de fa ha che se ne o mo pe se o mo chere se dum so bi a ma gana no. E ye onabol e jod bawa e wo e ye tv tre so oni e ye e fan e se yin loya matin pebu e no mo kan o mo tir bo mo in fact. Se insu yo se oshe wa ka se oshe wa pa. Man ka se opete wa so. Haane. San se. Nye eko so e wu program na so no. Eni no kruwa e wo e wa Mary Deal a ya kan wwa se mwa. Mary Deal ya ya kan wwa se mwa ne MPP4. E pesan ko mo fwa kwe ti kwa embi su wya. E di ko piye kuma se mai mu. Nan ko mo di ntro. E di chira omo se omo so so one of the signature program. Projecta omo so omo de ibre a shante rije no. E non omo ye e di ama omo no. E non. Hwan sem. E ne kronwa e ba mu ya. Dokta mamu du ba omyan sa wum. O mami pinine kufu adon sa wum. Na bo a chen a jakon. A ye nina yi ni mu obre a na. O mami pinini. A kufu adon kan a se wa misleading ni. Hwan ke ka hwan e mani lusu ne juma. En sam bebe yi. Me pasi ye ko, na ye ko shwe video no nene nko mwona se di ye si ko ye. Na shwe se di ye si e so pa ou nya e wo platform no so. Me pa chow anse ni ybe kon me se o so be subscribe to Pen Dream TV. Na wa like ye video no e di ya maye ni se ni be a video bit mi ya kwe chila ma fo fro so so. E tu mi enye e bi a shwe. Na ou yya wa shwe video no a maye. Na me pa chow ou adwin chile bi suwa comment session no wo se asi ye na o di atu ho e di ya maye ni. Ye nko na ye nko shwe. TV3, the key point program, no, said he a course of embracing here. Of this project, listen to him. Kumasi, the Kumasi One Thermal Power Plant, mm -hmm. formerly known as the Ameri Power Plant. I want to take a look at this. The the spokesperson for the Energy Ministry reacting to this 38 million dollars you say cost the 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 country in transporting the thermal plant from the western region to the Ashanti region, which you say you are going to investigate. Take a look. Is it true that you are injecting $35 million just to transporting the AmeriPlan from Western region to the Ashanti region? <laughs> um, uh, it is not true. Uh, because the the cost the cost of the entire project is not even up to 35 million dollars but then clearly i mean we can understand the ndc um this whole thing about uh bringing a mary uh, as it was then called to kumase for st power stability and you know addressing voltage issues i i, I don't know the problem the ndc has with this particular project because i mean since we announced that we are coming to commission this project there's been this hue and cry and clearly you do not know where the issues are from for example they even talk about we renaming it and all of those things i mean if you if you look at the precedents it is quite clear that just like we have in other places we have Kong one thermal power plant i mean we look at the name of the place and then we also look at the sequence so if we name this as kumasa one thermal power plant it is just in sync with precedent so where did you get this 38 million dollars from? So, uh, uh, okay, so let me start first. Uh, I, should I do this presentation as a body of just the whole American or just that 38 million thing that you want me to address? The body, Ameri. Ameri, okay, fantastic. So let me... Let to zero in also on, also on the fundamental fact because you yes, are saying so, you're going to investigate yeah, so, so where did you get this, from, the figure from? So, you recall that in 2022, this whole issue of relocation started in 2022, where 
the initial figure that they had thrown out there was around 23 24 million dollars then at a meeting at oak plaza the then deputy chief executive of uh, vary or being kenzo or something mm -hmm. in fact the reason why i've made is that i've even brought uh, what they call it the verbatim recording mm -hmm. of the conversation the verbatim which i have here which i'll share with you and i tell you and i asked the question specifically i asked him on two things i said first how much was the project going to cost he indicated that Indeed, initially, yes, it was around 23, but now, based on the scoping and other things they did, it had moved to $34 million. Hmm. $34 million. The chairman then, or the chairman. Which, which year was this? This is 2022. The venue was Oak Plaza. Okay. The chairman opened his mouth and said, $34 million, that is a lot. Hmm. This is what um, Atacha. Atacha said, and to this uh, done, I decided to read the, the the report because usually at parliamentary committee level, beyond just the clerks doing that, we have the Hansa department mm -hmm. recording it verbatim. So whatever you say, the question and answer. So it is here, and it was reported by mm -hmm. Obin Kenzo. Mm -hmm. That's see. why we had indicated, and two, they had so sourced it and given it to Metilonus. Mm -hmm. You remember me telling you, does that name uh, ring a bell yeah, in your ears? The PDS deal. The, what, what not the PDS. The, the renegotiated Almeri deal. Mm -hmm. You recall that the renegotiated Almeri deal that ended the uh, political career of uh, uh, Boje Yaku. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It was Metelonos that was behind it. Mm -hmm. It's the same company, and I remember that renegotiated B, uh, uh, deal. Myself and Kojo Poku were on the same side. I remember very clearly. Then he was a uh, civil society. Mm -hmm. He worked closely with me to oppose it. You see, he worked closely mm -hmm. with me to oppose it. Are you getting the point again? And then, so. Are, that, are you saying now he's. Oh, no, uh, but now he's a big man. So. We're always on the same, we're always on the same side. That's so, why you guys inflated it by 800 million. Well. So, right? are you getting the point? <laughs> okay. Then that same company finds itself mm -hmm. back now to the relocation of America. Mm -hmm. And the figure moving from 23, 24 million dollars mm -hmm. to 34 million dollars. Mm -hmm. And I'm quoting and I'm using somebody that said, of being Kenzo. Then the deputy, I think he was a deputy chief executive or something. Mm -hmm. Indicated that and then gave uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's his name again? Gave us a company and said it was so source. Mm -hmm. We asked for a breakdown of that. Mm -hmm. He promised mm -hmm. that the following Monday, it was a weekend, mm -hmm. the following Monday, he was going to submit the breakdown to us. Mm -hmm. As we speak today, mm -hmm. that document has not come. They will never do it. That, that document has not come. come. And so mm -hmm. that's why we are saying that. Beyond just all the hula baloo and the commission and other things, this is a project that we will investigate and get to know what and what constituted the thirty-four million dollars just to relocate it from Abuaze to what? And you are not even relocating all the plants. Out of the ten, you are only relocating six to Kumase. So what and what went in and changed the figure to from twenty something million dollars to about to thirty four million dollars. That's the first point. Two. Mm -hmm. You see Okay the uh, uh, Obin Kenzo I see here is um, Edward Echo Obin Kenzo Kenzo is VRA. Yes. Yes. It is indeed the case. Yes. Okay. So no, I know okay. I know I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And the venue, I know what I'm talking about because I, I personally asked the, the question. Website and if you look at the, after that, I'll share the document with you. If okay. you look at the, the I ask him that specific question. Now to He's actually still the deputy Chief Executive of VRA. VRA, okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I'm quoting him. I'm quoting him for that. Now okay. the other thing I need to talk to you about is it just been uh, as a matter of uh, what do you call it? Uh, the project. Look. Uh, you recall that uh, Ameri, when Ameri came on board, you had a lot of people talk about Ameri, about the fact that it was involved, uh, the whole deal was based on corruption, rent seeking, and what have you. Indeed, a week ago or so, Kojo Poko did some write up, and it was all over the, uh, what do you call it? All over the platforms. Yeah, I think I received. It. Reiterating these points and saying that the name Ameri was so toxic that nobody should be associated with it. Mm. 
Now, first of all, let me now give you something. I, I recall that when, and this, let's talk because Kojo Pogo has always been talking about technical. So let's go technical with this. Mm -hmm. So when, Mary, you know, generally sometimes you can have uh, a normal IPP coming on board. You can have an emergency power plant that comes under emergency power agreement. You can also have a BOT that you build, you own, you operate, and you transfer. The EC, uh, sorry, the Ameri deal was basically a BOT arrangement. The arrangement was that in five years, they were supposed to recover, they, they were supposed to recover their capital investments. And then after that, they will do what? Hand over to the government of Ghana. And usually this arrangement is done when you do not have the initial capital outlay to be able to do it. So that was the arrangement. So when they started issuing the, uh, the, uh, talking about the fact that the, the, the deal was corrupted, it was, it was shrouded in very funny uh, and under dealings and other things. The then president decided to commission PWC, mm -hmm. that's the Price Waterhouse Coopers, mm -hmm. to do an audit, a value for money audit. You mean your mama? Yes, of the project. When they did the project, they compared about four or five parameters. They compared the composite tariff. They compared the capacity tariff. They compared the, the install capacity per cost. And they compared the IRR, you are counting mm -hmm. the internal, uh, sorry, internal uh, rate of return. These are the four things they did. What is this composite tariff? Composite tariff is associated with the fixed cost in putting up the infrastructure. And what they did was that they compared it to nine comparable plants in Ghana. I mean, that had already, PPAs that have been signed in Ghana, nine comparable plants. When they did the computation, Ameri had, a, what do you call it, a capacity, a, sorry, a composite tariff of 14.59 kilowatt hours. If you took this nine, their average was 14.94. It was higher than Ameri. Now, too, they looked at the capacity tariff. The capacity tariff is basically uh, the cost associated with generation, transmission, and distribution of the power. Mm -hmm. That is what the capacity tariff is. Now, on the capacity tariff, when they did, and you usually, when you are going to do this, remember that I have indicated that if you look at Ameri, Ameri was supposed to be five years. But ordinarily, for any generating plant, it has a lifespan of 20 years, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So when you are actually going to do the capacity tariff, you need to spread it over the, the number of years, mm -hmm. which is the 20 years. But because Ameri had to hand over the plant by five years, they will front load the recovery rate. So for example, if they were supposed to recover it at 20 years, they will sh shrink it to five years, but they must recover their cost. So to make a comparison between Ameri and the other distributing, uh, sorry, comparable thermal plants, you have to levelize the period, the tenure. So instead of five years, so you will have to make it 20 years because they are all the same type of plants. So when you do it 20 years, you can then calculate their, uh, what do you call it, their capacity tariff. I don't know what I'm making sense. Oh, it's very simple. Yes. We understand. Yeah, you understand. Right. Yeah. So you have to do that. When they did that, Ameri was the lowest. Oh, the lowest. Publish. Was the lowest. Publish then. Oh, I, I wrote an article 2017. I wrote a, a full so article let's, on let's that. Bring out the report. Yeah. Then two, uh, three. They then looked at uh, what they call the installed capacity per cost. And this one is basically, you look at the total cost of the project. And then the total uh, capacity of the project. And you do an, a simple, uh, so that you know per unit, how much it costs. When they did that, when they still did that, Ameri was still the lowest. The last but not the least, last but not the least, was they looked at the... Uh, internal rate of return. Internal mm -hmm. rate of return is a test of prof uh, prof uh, profitability. profitability. Is that not it? Mm -hmm. It's a test of prof profitability. Mm -hmm. Look, PURC's, PURC's uh, uh, what do you call it, approved rate of return, internal rate of return, is about 9%. Ameri was doing 6.3, which was lower. So it meant that in terms of margins and other, you know, usually they use a, a, a IRR to know as to whether I should go into a business or, or not. not. Mm -hmm. And most companies will look at, a, a, what do you call it, a project and say for our project for our company any project that does not give us an IR of above say 10 percent mm -hmm. i won't do it mm -hmm. i get the point yes. because they want to they have a standard they put there even with that the one that prc approved because prc has said that if you are coming as an independent power producer and your IR 
is above nine percent what it simply means is that they will not be ready to accept because it will be too expensive for the state but amary has 6.3 percent so if you look at all these factors all these factors suggested that amary was a very good deal that is why when this government when they were in opposition indicated that they were going to uh, what they call it investigate America, you know, it became a political issue. Mm -hmm. And they came when they went to the negotiation, they realized that look, they could not do anything about this thing because actually the facts on the ground, the facts on the paper that they were dealing with in the contract were far better. And if they were going to do anything about it, it was going to be dangerous. Then, but because they wanted to meet a political promise, they decided to go into it. And you know what they did when they brought under with this same metalonos that did the relocation, mm -hmm. when they brought it, could you see? It became the renegotiated agreement was more expensive than the original agreement. Is that the one they increased? Yeah, yes, 800 yes. Million. 800 million. 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 So it became more expensive by, uh, than the original contract. And not only was it more expensive, so. they it extended the tenure from five years to six years. That's what they did. But the, the, the objective of the renegotiation was to actually reduce it. Reduce it. So how, uh, how did they And so, so where it then went up? So that's where myself and my brother Kojo, uh, Kojo, Kojo Poku. And then, of course, Ben Bachi, we were all on the same side. So we then decided, look, we said that we were going to, and I remember this, the day of the renegotiation, they brought the table, it was the day they were burying the late uh, vice president, uh, Emi Sata. Mm. Indeed, they wanted to smuggle the, the document. So they knew that the NDC MPs were going to be at Emi Sata's funeral. And so while we were there, they brought the report to, to negotiate. So we were there when somebody, somebody called me on phone and said, Eddie, they brought the American mm -hmm. renegotiated thing and they are having a meeting. I had to run from uh, what do call it, International Conference Center mm -hmm. to Parliament to the meeting grounds to go and sit in that day to uh, what do call it, oppose this thing. Now, quick one. When we finally expose the, the, the limitations of this particular project, mm -hmm. that was how Boje Jako what do call it, lost his job. Mm -hmm. One of the things, the one of the saddest moments in my life was the fact that only Boje Jako was the one who went. And I'll explain to you why. Mm -hmm. When he came to Parliament, he came with an executive approval. Mm -hmm. You know, usually we set projects and uh, you either take it to cabinet for approval or you have an executive approval. Mm -hmm. So this came under an executive approval. The president, which, which means that the president was fully aware yes, of it. Yes. Now, this executive approval was signed by uh, Asante Bidietu. Ah. Now, there are two things. Either when the president was firing Kujo, uh, what's the name, Boche Jako, mm -hmm. there are two things. Either he himself, it was a clear indication that he himself didn't know what he was doing because he was the one who said, I have approved it mm -hmm. and therefore take it to parliament for them to also approve it. Mm -hmm. Either he didn't know or he was not even aware that there was an executive approval. And so, I you know we have had evidence of that. You know the letter but that was written. Ever be the no, let me give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. You remember when, I think two years ago, when the budget issue came, mm -hmm. and then the, Mr. Speaker had indicated that, look, they needed to look at, they needed to look at, uh, to what do you call it, uh, the, um, uh, the allocation given to the judiciary and then the legislature, if you recall. Yeah. Then Asante Bediye wrote directly to the Mr. Speaker, mm -hmm. saying that he could not, uh, alter the allocations, if you recall, okay. that yeah, yeah, yeah. finally the president had to apologize. And write, he, he wrote a letter directly to the Mr. Speaker apologizing and indicating that this was not uh, with, a, with, a, with his express approval. approval. Mm -hmm. And the majority leader had to come out to me. So there's evidence that Asante Bidietu, at one point or other, sometimes write letters without, without the knowledge of the president. Mm -hmm. So I am giving the president the benefit but, of the doubt. You, know, you see, there's a difference between writing a letter without the knowledge of the president and actually issuing an executive approval yeah. for a, 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 a particular agreement yeah. or otherwise. It, yeah. it, there are two different things. Yeah, so the point of judgment is the case that the president is not aware. Yeah, so in the resignation. So the point issue. So in the sacking Bwachi, in sacking yes. Fact, yes. yes. In sacking Bwachi, Jaku, I remember very clear that he said that he was misled. He wasn't running. Yes, exactly. He said he was misled. So he was part of it. Yes, so, I think so. he was misled. In, in, in agreeing and accepting that you've been misled does not necessarily mean that executive approval was issued without your knowledge. Mm -hmm. that, that will be very... Yeah, so the point of... The, no, so I see they needed to be politically correct. You know why? Because at that time, the minority had said that he was part of the problem. Mm -hmm. He was part of the problem. And therefore, when they were now making their point, they said that he was misled by, what do you call it, the facts that were, were presented to him. Mm -hmm. But first of all, so it, the point I'm just the, uh, the, the that fundamental that thing was that they renegotiate oh, the renegotiate the yes. renegotiate the renegotiate oh you'll come you'll come on because you, because you know the point you so uh. so the renegotiated issue was this mm. then you now have a situation this is a project that you think that was a bad project you decide to go to Ashanti region with this project 
you re the relocation. Alfred, let me state it here very clear. I have nothing against the relocation because it makes technical sense. One. Technically, it makes sense. It makes sense because. Okay. One, it reduces your losses, transmission losses, because you are not bringing the power closer to the consumers. Two, it improves your quality quality of voltage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Ashanti region had this problem of this fluctuation. fluctuation. We were thinking that Bui could have helped it, because Bui is also around that area. And when I say area, I mean the northern part of mm -hmm. Ghana. So we thought Bui could have helped it, but it was not helping. So with the, the relocation of these plants will support in the quality. So I don't have any problem with that. The pl place I have a problem with is the fact that you a project that you yourself, you poo pooed, you pick it up, take it to, uh, what do you call it, Kumase, and rename it. People say, oh, this is just Pierre, just renaming, what is the point? Let me quote my deputy, my deputy uh, communication uh, director, uh, officer for our party, Malik. Mm -hmm. Malik said something yesterday that was very uh, instructive. He said that, look, if you have somebody who likes uh, uh, conducting naming ceremonies, you should learn how to give birth. Because if you don't give birth, you don't what? You don't name people. And basically, if you look at this project, you did not bring it. And because of the fact that he has this pension for always renaming projects, he did that. And the, and the, and the, uh, I'm getting distracted by this thing. And the, what do you call it? The, the part that we're saying was this. You know that Ashanti region for a very large uh, time has always been complaining about the fact that government has not done anything for them. Mm -hmm. They saw this particular project as if it was a project that was meant for, for that, oh, we have brought a project to you and it becomes part of a political value that they will make. And we were trying to expose the hypocrisy of it. And that's just the point I'm making. But basically, based on the facts Alfred, on the ground. Alfred, if you leave, if you leave no, power, no, no, you no, no. Hold, hold on, hold on. Hold I'll, I'll finish. I'll finish my point. I'll finish. Oh, 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 so I'll finish my submission. Well, I think that it was worth establishing a number of things. So getting to understand the reason why you question the cost of it the details you have given is important yeah. and that's why Kojo, we we need to know what has led to well, this I cost agree, that i've agree, been but if you leave it with bawa he will make all the politics because he has information the because <laughs> you, you, you you made reference okay to the so that he was part of let him come in. <laughs> on some of these things so he understands that he knows the information about what went into this so it's worth hearing from him well, but now, at, me, at this point yes Kojo, let me explain. Mm -hmm. You see, there is always a saying that good uh, is the enemy of great. The reason we say good is the enemy of great is that whenever we think that something is good, we accept it and we don't want to excel for better. I agree with my brother, um, Edward Bauer. And Mr. Bauer, Honorable Bauer, me and you are always on the same side, though. We've never departed the sides. We are always on the same side on all issues. You know me, in 2015, 2014, you can play all the tapes with me and Alfred on various programs. I have, I, I actually supported that Mary deal because at that time I said that if you go to the market without any money and somebody gets one hand over you, it's a business transaction and you lost out. It does not negate the fact that it was a bad deal. The fact that somebody got one over you in business doesn't make it a bad deal. It doesn't mean that it's a good deal, sorry. You see, you keep using words like internal rate of returns and at a time when you do analysis of existing plans and blah, blah, blah. When most of our mothers and fathers and sisters go to China and they see a product and they realize that that product is $1 in China, but in Ghana, it's 60 cities. They quickly buy it, come to Ghana, and the cost of landing that product in Ghana is probably 18 cities. But because the existing product sells in Ghana for 60 cities, they will also sell it for 55 cities, just reducing it by five cities. It doesn't mean that it is a good deal that the person is giving Ghanaians. It means that by business, he is also trying to make the best out of what he can. It doesn't make it the best. And that is the comparison you are making. The existing plants that were in Ghana at the time that you guys were trying to compare America with, those were negotiated badly. Those plants, what were the plants at the time? We only had Tico and Tapco. These are old plants that have been here for years. The only time that we did some of these PPAs with, with, with thermal plants before America came on, is the likes of Asogli and all these long-term infrastructure projects. 
as uh, the Ameri plant at the time was meant to be an emergency power, something that can come in quickly with little civil engineering and little work and give Ghanaians power. We know the facts, and nobody can dispute these facts, that if you, we had gone directly to us $220 million. That's the fact. Nobody. Okay. We agree that GE would take time in, in making sure that those machines were made to your specification to, under the emergency situation. It was not possible to buy directly from GE. And again, we didn't have the money to now say that GE, we are paying much. So the Ameri transaction happened. But Ameri themselves also did not have the machines. And it's a fact that the people who had the machine was Mytilenius, Metka, a Greek company. And they published it on their website that they are coming to Ghana with their 10 GE machines for $360 million. It's a fact. Nobody can dispute that. So what everybody complains about is that you can do all the explanation. You can say all the things that you wanted to say. All mm -hmm. we are saying is that there was a procurement of power which came into Ghana at $510 million. But the company that came into Ghana to do the work, Metka, Mytilenios, only basically gave that machine out for five years at $360 million. So somebody, the middleman, made away with $160 million. I see. That's all we are saying. But talk now, about the middleman and, the, and, and, and how much is costing the, the Ghanaian people and the middleman. And, and, and well, because you, yes, you raise the see, element of. The problem. That's why I said that. You see, when you take it from that angle, Ghanaians will never get a better deal. Because I'll give you an example. Look, some of the capacity charges that we gave to Car Power, AXA, and some of these companies, they couldn't get that from the countries they came from. But could you, was the that. Car what, capacity that Mm. Say that again. What, what, what was the renegotiation? If we talk about, if we take it from that angle, the Ghanaians well, will never get, get a better deal. What was it? Was we'll a renegotiation? The renegotiated deal that you, I mean, I'm talking about the MPP, went to renegotiate a better deal for us, the Ghanaian people, looking at the Which fact one? that the cost the, in, the increased. The Ajaku one or the the Ajaku one? The Ajaku one, uh, one, uh, one. one that we are seeing now documents indicating the cost went up to about of, of about 800, 800 million no, dollars the, the jaco one never went through it was the amewu one that was done the jaco one never went through the jaco one was basically aborted and at the time when it was aborted like edward bauer has rightfully said we all fought against it and thought it was a badly negotiated deal so um, it was aborted but the jaco one never went through but what i keep saying is that two wrong does not make it right. The fact that the ndc led administration at the time gave Ghanaians a bad deal, and the fact that the Addison Committee and all those people went ahead and was going to give Ghana a bad deal and it was stopped, does not negate one other. Look, I have said that if we wanted the best out of this America, what we should have done was an, a commission of inquiry, not what they did with uh, Addison being the chairman and all those we keep writing they did. For me, I was 100% against it. I, see. I think if we wanted to tell Ghanaians the truth, we should have done a commission inquiry. A lot will have come out. And I, Kujupoku, would have gone in front of that committee and, and, and given a, test, a statement. Because there are certain things I know that, because look, there are some of the people that when the Addison Committee was formed, the very people who did that, who were part of the American transaction <laughs> during the NDC were the very people we have put together uh, under the Addison Committee. How are you going to get any truth out of the matter when the very people who did the 510 are the pe very people you've assembled under the Addison Committee? I see. So but I said that if Ghanaians were to be given the truth, we should have done a commission of inquiry. We would have gotten more out of it and people would have gone to jail. Recommendation for jail time would have given by the inquiry based on the information that was on the ground. I see, but, but let's move on and discuss this issue of the, relo the relocation. Mm -hmm. Look, my brother uh, Bauer have said clearly that, look, it is not a matter of the technical issue. But the most important thing when people talk about cost of transporting the plant, what happened? I, I, I honestly think that 
Edward Bauer and his committee should not, Honorable Edward Bauer and his committee should not wait to come into power to investigate this thing. They, should, they have uh, subpoena powers as a committee of parliament. They should call uh, VRA to come in front of the subcommittee and basically interrogate them on the cost because I'm interested in the cost. Everybody is interested in the cost because I saw miscellaneous at the time when they were trying to get miscellaneous to do this thing. I saw $10 million. And that's the time that the minister said that they wanted a guarantee of $10 million for miscellaneous to do it. And VRA senior workers went on demonstration, wrote letters and said that they can do it themselves. So it was given to VRA to do. So what Honorable Edward Bauer is talking about is the time when they were trying to give it to miscellaneous. But now, when that was aborted, VRA was asked to do it from their own internally generated fund. And this project was done with that uh, VRA money. So I am interested in knowing the exact cost of what uh, it costs to build the, the enclave and the transportation. We've all seen the video of uh, what has been on social media that went in. But Nations yes, and the Ghanaians who made this happen. But the far and most important thing is that how much did it cost Ghanaians? And we all want to know. It's not only Edward Baba who wants to know. So don't wait to come into power and say that you want to come into power to know. No, today, tomorrow, on Monday, you can go to parliament and ask the committee to call VRE and, and ask them for those documents. It's They have no option but to give it to you in parliament. Okay? But the point is that if we want to know that it is a cost, it's not a cost of transporting, because on social media, people think that, oh, just putting the generators on the cars Mm -hmm. move from Takrade to Kumase, it is what is costing 35 million. No. You've seen the video. You've seen all the engineering work, the civil engineering, the electrical engineering, all the work that went on to build it. They built uh, structures. They actually built offices, did the concrete work and everything. We've seen the video. That is what they are saying that cost that much. I don't know how much it costs, but it's of public interest to know how much it costs. If it's not forthcoming, there is right information. I mean, we can write to them through right information to ascertain, and we'll get it. So that one is not somebody waiting to come into power. It's something that everybody is interested in knowing. Uh, you, so you support that that call for at least the establishment of exactly how much it costs the taxpayer? 100%. 100%. So, why would nobody look? I'm a Ghanaian like you. You see, I don't know why all of a sudden people think that the Kujupoku of civil society who always want well, the right well, thing. Well, well it is your pronouncement. Know. It is your pronouncement. That sometimes gets people no confused. Pronouncement. As to who pronouncement you pronouncement were and who you are now. I correct you. And, no, the pronouncement where I correct you and I correct Martin Pebu for calling the vice president the crook, that is what makes my pronouncement any bad. Well, I, I, I you, don't you talk about seven things. Everybody who knows, Martin, uh, Alfred, you've interviewed me for over 15 years. You know I don't stand for certain things. You can't change Kojopo. It doesn't matter who I'm a chairman for or what party I belong to. Every time that I sat on TV3 for the last 15 years, I was MPP, blue blood, 100%. But I'm dead in the middle on these issues. It doesn't mean that I've changed. It means that I stand for the truth. So 100%, we want to know the cost of the VIA project. Why would we not want to know? Well, since you talk about correcting me i don't know exactly what you meant by that but if it's about what martin Pebu well, said host, if it's I'm about afraid, host, no, should, i'm coming if it, let martin if it, know no, re re relax relax don't worry I, i'm i'm coming to that re re don't 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 worry if it's about what martin Pebu said and what you said earlier in indicating that he said we have the video we, we're going i'm going to recall this because yes i mean sometimes things slip through we may not get it right every time every now and then but for this particular issue of ensuring that what is said is within a particular context and when it is outside of it i exercise that right as the host of this program to call people to retract or apologize if you follow this show i do it the best way possible so since you said that Martin Pebu made a statement and you categorically indicated that he called the vice president a thief and I allowed it. This is what he said exactly for the benefit of our viewers so that the people who are aligned to you will not take what you have said hook, line and sinker and think that that's the truth. This is it. 
involved in, I mean, representing some people. So I understand a bit about mm -hmm. the transaction. What we are saying is that, listen, this thing is not about private sector or public. It's about the human beings. You have cooks. But we have sat down there and changed the guarantee, right, from bank to insurance. Mm -hmm. And it's been one of the big problems. So it's the human beings. It's the integrity deficit. It's not about public or private. Look at China. Why didn't the, the U.S. and go see? Look at China. You know how much China, the Chinese government, is involved in uh, business? Well, so that's just for the benefit of our viewers. At no point did Martin Pebble call the vice president a thief. But oh, here. he said so, we have so, proof. So, and so, you so, you read the video. No, no, well, he this, said we have proof. Right? Anyway, you, well, you, you are... He mentioned about uh, thing. So, no, the, the, was there a direct reference to the vice president? Okay. Uh, well, anyway. So, uh, well, basically, uh, basic, I think that uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, my friend Koyo Poku misheard. So okay. that is normal. Sometimes we, we mishear things. And so uh, these things can happen. So I uh, let's not put him on the spot. He's my friend. So and this morning he's too hot. Well, put me on the spot. He just <laughs> okay, that's okay. <laughs> now let me he bring in Mr. Wachi. That's the man's okay. Name at the end of it, you are telling me that you put me on the spot. Okay, oh, let, let me let me bring in Mr. Wachi on, on, the, on this <laughs> matter. Just, just, hold, hold on, Mr. Wachi. This issue on the I think we've settled this matter. Yes, the relocation of a Mary. I mean, there's been clear establishment that things could have been done differently. The element of the cost is one that we're all interested in. There's some consensus on this platform that we need to establish how much it costs us. But for the technicalities, there's some sound reasoning in that. From where you sit, would this serve the generality of the purpose for which this movement was made? Quickly, before before we go to the next issue. No, I think it's it's a short term bandage on a bigger problem. Um, you know where we don't have um, a stronger transmission infrastructure, which we've been hoping that we could build and and strengthen the system. So rather than strengthen the transmission infrastructure to be able to wheel power, um, we think that relocating power plants to Kumasi is the solution. Uh, meanwhile, we are even exporting power to, all the way to Burkina. So are we going to build power plants uh, in, in uh, along the border as well uh, to be able to, to send the power to them? I think there are technical ways of addressing problems. And our advoca advocacy has focused on ensuring that at all times, the decisions we take are very optimal and they make sense uh, with the resources that we do have. And we have indicated time and again that this relocation was extremely unnecessary at this time, particularly when the, the, the under recoveries in the sector are extreme and costing us billions every year. You know, it, it would have been, it, it's certainly a terrible decision to add on to that burden. But essentially, that's what the politicians have done to add on to the cost. As of now, we're still looking for how much it costs us to do the relocation. The initial attempt was going to cost us about 71 million a uh, dollars in three years to do that. Um, that didn't happen. And we had, you know, VRA wanted to do it by itself, but also has other contractors in the mix. So we will get a sense of how much that relocation is costing us. But on the gas side, where we are moving the gas from where Ameri was and was accessible, uh, you know, to the existing gas infrastructure, um, it's going to cost us almost two, uh, two billion dollars plus in 16 years to be able to uh, pay off uh, the re capacity reservation that we have with Jensa. And you recall our advocacy on that project and thought that it was a reckless decision uh, to have done uh, at this particular time without clear recourse to how much it's going to cost uh, Jensa to do that infrastructure, but just to pay them those billions uh, of dollars. I mean, if you wanted to simply put power plant in Kumasi and you have a cash flow certainty of $2 billion. You could even build a nuclear plant that will give us thousands of megawatts uh, in Kumasi and not, you know, put a gas pipeline and then relocate an existing power plant at such an exorbitant, uh, if not reckless, uh, uh, cost to the state and to the people of Ghana. 
But that is what the politics demanded, and they have done it. But all of us are going to have to pay uh, for such a decision uh, that has been made, uh, rather than thinking through the problem carefully and addressing them. And you will hear the ministry or the minister say that it was Greco's decision. If it was Greco's decision to spend $2 billion plus to build power plants, then they don't even qualify to be advising the minister himself. On, on, on those kinds of decisions, right? How do you optimize $2 billion when you have it today? That is a critical decision. And not just saying that we need generation. You need generation at what cost? It should be part of the decision making. It should be part of the thinking process uh, of, of improving uh, the grid. But beyond that also, I mean, the gas we have, the reason why there is doom so in Ghana today is because we don't have enough gas. So sending Another plan to Kumasi doesn't mean that you have more gas to be able to fix the problem, right? So it's the same gas that you're going to move, deny other plants, and be able to send it to Kumasi and pay transmission charge for the gas that will be sent uh, to Kumasi to be able to generate power. So the cost of generation essentially has gone up. Uh, and, and in the coming days, we'll be doing the numbers to show by how much you know, that would have gone up uh, by this singular decision. Uh, for which we would have to adjust the tariff uh, to be able to absorb uh, at that cost and also deny some plants either in the west or in the east of you know uh, 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 the gas that they need to be able to generate power. I see. So talk about the gas to generate power. So the, the cost element still comes in here. All things being equal going forward, it's going to cost more. And that would also influence some tariff increment. No, but the infrastructure is not the politicians who are going to pay for it. <laughs> it's the people who are going to pay the two billion plus uh, for the relocation and the infrastructure that has been developed. All right, and that's what we thought that you do first things first. Even if you had two billion to do it, which which you know investment within the power sector today is more critical uh, to ensure that we can stop you know subsidizing the power sector and at the same time improve infrastructure. And we thought that by building the transmission, a robust transmission infrastructure from Kumasi, uh, Kumasi to uh, uh, Pokwasi would have improved the flow of power from uh, um, all over the country to uh, the middle belt and also rationalizing the use of the wind power plant, which is already in the middle belt, all right? Making sure that they can generate the minimum that they can all, all year round uh, and not put pressure on it to generate more than it can do or should be doing as a regular base load plant. That would have been useful to stabilize the power uh, in the middle belt as well. But it required the thinking that nobody wants to do. All right, but just pumping in at uh, the political settlement angle to be able to uh, do the kind of investments that uh, we are getting committed to. Uh, around. Oh. Bambuache, thank you very much for joining us um, here on Key Point on this matter. And uh, remind you that we're live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, and uh, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. We're also live on a number of radio stations across the country. This is the Alfred. Key Point. The other, the next issue, no. Could you, Alfred, the, can the, I please the, say something on what Bambuache said, please? Uh, in a minute. Quickly. Yes, in a minute, please. I mean, Ben made the point of this two billion. Look, um, we are all worried about the agreement that was signed by GMPC, and he's right to point it out. Um, what I'm trying to assure everybody is that that agreement has to be novated to Ghana Gas, who is now the gas aggregator. And in terms of all these uh, concerns being addressed by the civil society, ASAP, and other institutions, that concern will be looked at. We don't think that, yes, the two billion he mentioned is not money that has been spent. It's money that will be spent over a period of time if the agreement signed between Jensa and GMPC is not looked at and certain things corrected. So there is that issue of novating the agreement from GMPC to Ghana Gas. But in doing that, we will look at the terms and the way that was done because we all agree that the terms were not the best. Okay. Thank you for that. But you see, but you see uh, again, before we go. This, is, this, is a, this is a sector that has been managed as if, as if the people doing it are, are amateurs. And I'll explain to you why. The same government over, over two, two years, three years, 
have changed aggregators from Ghana gas to GMPC back to Ghana gas. And sometimes you realize that depending on whoever has been given the decision to be the aggregator of gas, they then assume these particular uh, 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 agreements. Look, I, I think that, and myself, Ben in particular, we've had discussions on this issue of the agreement between uh, GMPC and that of uh, what they call it, uh, Gensa, which is a, a private company. And it is only fair that we, we really investigate this further. And I am happy that Kojopoku is saying that they were going to look at it. They should better look at it because I have had situations where even my party has had the occasion to address it and talk about the, the, the shortest end of the stick being handed over to Ghana through GMPC in that particular agreement. So this is an agreement that we should all be interested in and see how we can investigate it and get it properly done. Indeed. Thank you. You're still live here on Key Point. Now, the, the next issue, which is related, in fact, I'm just going to round up on that matter about the, the PRC, okay. um, the fine of five point, over 5.8 million CDs slapped on the board of ECG. The board members, in fact, the lawyers of of ECG and the board have all responded to this, questioning the locus of PRC in going on this path. And they have indicated that they were they denied natural justice of even being head. That is for the ECG to prove. But this is an issue that we're going to get into. Does that take away the fundamental concerns that especially PRC itself has raised would we'll have a conversation on this matter because the ECG has indicated they would head to the courts if PRC does not backtrack on this fine that they have slapped on the board. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. Stay with us. Another set of guests will be joining us on Key Point. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. NT a year honorable Edward Bauer ene kwaju poku ya yi na nyim se oka eye dr mamudu baumia ni campaign team ho na osai energy aspect e wukrum ha omo enkoma ekoko so e wo tv3 the key points so ene yap kofa e di abrem mo akasa mo hu se de ade no ete krono a enkrofu yi atuma hwe nyankopon wanim aboye krono tetwa mo a mpp4 led by led by umampenyini akufuado Sorry. Ne eye mamudu baumia na omotimia she a boy a crono tetria moise. In fact, cronoa a quenbia and down. Na ye chio mui yeno. Afi di omutumi ebe kayana se. Eh, eye the president has been misled. Uti and samoa a jod bawa a kaya chase. There wasn't anything like misleading. A ye chrono and uncle fui a plan is so mobile. Enna NDC a fence a minority in parliament. No, omit me a quick a rectify it. No, much so. So, why would she make a job bower so or did dimly car? Not or did free a year a fence saying the late vice president. I miss a at a year say a DBPA meeting Nasia. A chess say. One yen to my mahon man can you see you see a crown one crop we a boy over 800 million Ghana cities and yes kaketwa crop we at the account almost just a sika bubro ju kam crop we at tn nam omu a chess omu a yaya manaki numpi singing ya na oman pini become in tia or say somebody has misled you is it possible like how Kwame and so and will be able to me a misleading or my opinion more or bra ye nim channel sa sa in yoma we fefa and sana or a ye minister not to me at a bri at the abba a ye parliament now we shall quite impun it da or most share meat or most share some commodity at the end or more a best more girl no edia groom nanka or my fala 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 and so I eat a somebody a fan crop when you say. Nanka will be a one, a child say a crono pa, a dainty, and a juma dia etesa. No money a day beans, mogul and fam maho. Not die ye 
a Miss Atta, Nay, a fan is saying, Nay, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. I wouldn't say, because so ye NDC didn't in NDC MPC in Nina will be there. In Tinian Yawad, near Fambra Parliament, and Fambet now committing to near pass in that street. Let's just say, Yada Daum, let's just say, the Encasica, Modia Tup soon in Nano Nankan Crofway to me, we are. Ah, NDC four. It me a quick. If you say, Mm, Crofway person, more boy chrono, I'll more rush at the bar, a parliament, I'll more buy ya, a dean at the ho, or more bobu bumu, if you hear mu, if you hear mu, besides our questions are. Nature so over eight hundred million and a and crofui at the aqua kahua. Chess and ka or more a via ye do so do so do so do so do so do or more ye a passa 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 passa. Oh, na and ne and ne wo a ye nana fans of Kajupuku because it's a we ye NPP and now Baumia campaign member and Tino. Why better na a ye TV national television. E eh, toto pa pa so. A diya wu ni mwse. No kre diye. Ye mfa yu suma. Na ope sa ufa kwen biya so e defende. Ohu eni mguasi ya akaw. Ohu eni mguasi ya akaw. Ti ope sa ufa kwen bi su de propaganda bam. Ene se. E ye em, host no. E tu mi make you sure se. Obe em, expose no. By playing back the video. A ah, na. O o o o o. Na o alleji. Se, do, eh, Martin Kwebu Ekaye. Ahun se di e nyoma nkomono isi koye. O kan si di e. In fact, program na o ye no. O nye ba yasu. O ye ne juma. Be biye wasi ye de no kure no tonu no de ato. E no e no o ye. Ti un ti mi mfa bully. E ne propaganda. E ti mi mfa mbe fa ne, na kwa yasu. Aha, e ye Pen Dream TV. Mesha oso obe subscribe to the channel. Na wa like i video no edi ya maya. No wa share video na ma fofro so so. Ensa tu mi akabi ashibi. Na wa bin chile bi so so a. Me pa chow fato e ye comment section no ase et fama ye. Uwi ya. Na wa 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 so edi ya maya. Me pa chow. Pen dim ti wi se du. U nim se dibi ya ye kano. Ye se. Ye damu. Yopo. Ma me vada se ma Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV diye. O se ye damu. Yopo. Thank <laughs> you.